Welcome to our online service of Sunday the 16th of August. It's good that you have joined us and uh, taking time out to still ourselves, to tune into the voice of God and to gather in prayer and worship. I want to thank all of you who have responded to our Back to Church survey in the past few weeks. Um, the responses received to the first question, which was, would you attend in-person services uh, in the current circumstances and with the current restrictions? Um, the responses to that question were, as expected, very mixed. Many people felt that for them, the time or the circumstances would not be right to return to the church building for worship. Um, however, a significant minority did indicate that they would wish to attend in-person worship, even in these circumstances. Last Thursday, the Kirk session has met via Zoom, as we've done on a number of occasions before, and we have decided um, to work towards to a return of in-person worship from the 6th of September. For this, we need to complete our preparations and submit various checklists and um, a risk assessment. We need to submit this to Presbytery who will then grant us permission to reopen the building for the purpose of worship. Detail how attending church in these circumstances from September will work uh, will be included in the upcoming Lichgate which is being finalised uh, as we speak. Of course we realise that many of you uh, will continue um, to access our online services and will need to do so um, over the coming months and so the Kirk session has agreed to have live streaming equipment installed at the church to this end. Again, more detail about this will be in the Lich Gate. Let us now turn to God and take a moment to prepare ourselves for spending time in God's presence. Psalm 147 says this, Great is the Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the humble, he casts the wicked to the ground. Let us then come to God with a spirit of humility and pray to him now. Lord our God, we acknowledge your greatness. Your power and understanding is beyond measure. You oversee and know things that are far beyond our reach. You hold all the times of our world in your hands and you control its destiny. And yet we as humans puzzle at what goes on in history. We confess at times our own concern, care and vision for the world does not extend very far beyond our own lives and family. But you are concerned for the whole world and all its peoples. As we will hear today of your conversation with Abraham about the fate of the city Sodom, we recognise that you take a close interest in what goes on in our human societies. Help us in this story to learn more about you and what you care about. Shape us through this story to become more like you, just and righteous, compassionate and full of grace. Forgive us for when we fall short in character and action. Send your Holy Spirit and transform us, we pray, in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now sing the psalm I quoted earlier, Psalm 147, 
which is hymn 103 in our hymn books. Fill your hearts with joy and gladness. We continue to read this week in Genesis chapter 18. Last week we heard how Abraham and Sarah hosted three visitors who told them that Sarah would after all become pregnant and bear a child in her old age. Who exactly these three visitors were was never very clear. However, what they said was related in Genesis as though the Lord God himself was speaking directly to them. This continues in the rest of the chapter, which we will now read. It speaks about three men visiting or carrying on the visit. God reveals to Abraham his plans for the evil city Sodom. And we will find out that Abraham gets to have considerable input in God's plans. So let us hear Genesis 18 verses 16 to 33. When the men got up to leave, they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him, to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, and their sin so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? What if there are fifty righteous people in the city? Will you really sweep it away and not spare the place for the sake of the fifty righteous people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? The Lord said, If I find fifty righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham spoke up again. Now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, though I am nothing but dust and ashes, what if the number of the righteous is five less than fifty? Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five people? 
If I find 45 there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he spoke to him. What if only 40 are found there? He said, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold as to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if only 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. When the Lord had finished speaking with Abraham, he left and Abraham returned home. Well, that was an intriguing and audacious conversation between God and Abraham, wasn't it? Was this a good example of bargaining or haggling, the art of the deal? In our house, there are fairly frequent examples of this kind of bargaining. Sometimes I want one of the kids to do something for me and there is a bit of haggling involved to achieve a satisfactory outcome for both parties. Other times, a threat or a sanction has been issued by me and there is bargaining by the kids to water down said threat or sanction. If you are a parent, you will know how this works. And perhaps if you're of an older generation, then you may think one should not negotiate with children at all. And you're probably right, but such is life. Anyway, I wonder if this is what Abraham is doing. He's using all his persuasive powers to get God to adjust his plans to destroy Sodom. He's pleading and reasoning with God not to destroy the city if righteous some righteous and good people can be found. And his negotiating skills are both audacious and strong, even though he is haggling with an almighty God. It is quite a remarkable story. Would you dare to speak to God like this? There is something of the relationship between a parent and a child reflected in this story. Abraham pushes and pushes until he gets as far as he can with God. Yet he is very aware of his position before God. There is a great degree of trust on Abraham's part in the character and goodness of God. Abraham actually holds God to account based on his own character. Abraham says, would you kill the righteous along with the wicked? Far be it from you to do such a thing. Treating the righteous and the wicked alike, far be it from you, will not the judge of all the earth do right? It really turns into a philosophical argument. Surely a good and just God will do justice. You may wonder what was wrong with Sodom, why God wanted to destroy it. We've already come across the need to have a complete wipeout before in Genesis, when we looked at the story of Noah. Then God had concluded that all the earth was filled with violence and that all the intentions of men were set on evil. The situation in Sodom appears to be similar. And we've heard in our reading that a cry has gone out from Sodom and Gomorrah. This means that the injustice and the violence committed against the vulnerable and the poor had become so bad that the whole situation is crying out to God. The situation is crying out for God to intervene. Next week, I will go into some more detail when we look at chapter 19 as to what exactly was wrong in Sodom. But for this week, suffice to say, it got so bad that God had to do something about it. What is interesting about this passage is that God is portrayed as a ruler who does not make decisions remotely. 
Instead, God goes along to Sodom with his two aides to see for himself what the situation on the ground is. That might seem a bit of a daft image to us. Surely an all-knowing God does not need to go on a walk around to know what's what. And yet, even if this is perhaps an all too human image of God, it does underline that God cares passionately about justice and about people in their actual lives. God does not judge and rule remotely, not knowing or understanding what's at play in our lives or how his decisions impact our lives. This is usually the complaint against our political leaders, that they don't understand what our lives or our schools or our workplaces are really like. We complain against their governments that they're too detached and too remote. And many people feel that there are ruling elites professional politicians that don't understand normal life. Well, however you want to take this story, Genesis certainly wants to make clear that this is not how God is. God is different. He is a ruler and a judge who is intimately familiar with our lives and circumstances. He cares enough to show up at the call face. This, of course, we already knew because God showed up himself in Jesus and Jesus walked and talked and shared all of our lives. And instead of judging the world and bringing destruction and condemnation, as you would expect God to do, Jesus was judged and condemned by the rulers of our world. And although innocent, he was killed so that we may walk free from God's condemnation and judgment. This is how much God cares about justice and righteousness, enough to show up himself and to find out to the fullest, deepest extent what is going on. The other thing we learn about God from this conversation this negotiation between Abraham and God is that God is prepared to hear our point of view. He's prepared to be persuaded. Which is quite remarkable, really. We might wonder what the point of prayer is. And if you're like me, perhaps you're not that ambitious in what you pray for. If it's me, I tend to aim low, so I won't be disappointed. But Abraham was audacious and had great boldness in asking God on Sodom's behalf. And, as it turned out, God was persuadable. This should be an encouragement to us all to be bolder and more ambitious in our prayers. If you don't ask, you don't get. Or, as Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Will your heavenly Father not give good gifts to those who ask him. Of course, Abraham is not praying for himself. He is praying for an evil city. He is interceding on behalf of the righteous people that may yet live among them. Perhaps there is yet time for them to turn things round to make an impact and a difference in this place. Do we pray like that? Do we even pray for our community and our cities and our country? Again, I'll confess that this is usually at the bottom of my list of concerns and prayers, or it's not there at all, but not so for Abraham. And this shows that Abraham has the same concerns as God has for justice and righteousness, not just in his own household, but for the city of Sodom too. Do we have the same concern for the world as God has? We should intercede for the world, for our village, for our towns and cities, for our nation, and even those places that we would write off altogether. 
I want to finish my sermon with an invitation to join in with a week of prayer that starts tomorrow. Martin Fair, the moderator of the General Assembly, has sent out an invitation to all churches and all Christians to join in with. An invitation to a week of prayer for church and country. It's starting tomorrow and it runs until Saturday. At 8am each morning, starting on Monday, a pre-recorded reflection will go live on the Church of Scotland website and on their Facebook pages. And I will copy that onto our own Facebook page as well. These will include contemplative music, scripture readings, a brief thought for the day, a prayer and a blessing. And there will also be a suggested prayer activity that you can choose to take up at some point during the day and this is also suitable for families. In the evenings there will then be a live gathering on Zoom in which it is hoped that many from across the country and perhaps even further afield will participate. These will commence at 8.30 p.m. The prayers from each evening will also be watchable on Catch Up through the church's digital platforms. I hope you will make use of the daily reflections and will join in, even if perhaps just once or twice, with the Zoom prayer meetings in the evenings. I have myself been asked to contribute to the Friday um, evening prayer, but there should be plenty of better reasons to tune in. The story we've heard this morning of Abraham pleading with God for Sodom has taught us that God cares intimately for our lives and the life of our neighbours and friends. God cares for villages, for cities, for nations and governments near and far. And we should be bold and audacious like Abraham in our prayers to God for the world. And so let's take a leaf out of Abraham's book and hold nothing back in asking. Amen. We will now sing a hymn that is really a prayer of intercession in song, Beauty for Brokenness. Let us pray. Lord our God, compassionate judge, wise and caring ruler, 
We come before you now to give thanks. We give thanks for your patience and grace. We give thanks that you are slow to anger and quick to forgive, that you love the world and do not want it to perish. We know that you hear the cries of injustice and the pain suffered by many. We know that you see the acts of kindness and justice, however small, acting as grains of salt, keeping society livable, holding back decay and corruption. We pray for our world. We pray for our villages, towns and cities. We pray for workplaces and schools and hospitals. You know what the local culture is like in each of these places. Some bringing life and flourishing, others filled with anger and despair. Most a combination of both. We pray for justice and well-being for all, for truth and wholeness, for peace and understanding. So many things that often feel out of reach and yet, God, help us to keep these in mind and help us to play our part in society to bring these things about. We give thanks for Jesus who came and lived among us, bearing our struggles, our pain and our sins, dying on a cross so that we might not be condemned but forgiven and the world reconciled with you and with one another. In the silence, we now bring our own prayers before you, trusting that you care to hear them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn 482, Come Let Us to the Lord Our God. you to check out how the week of prayer this week is going to uh, work and how you can join in and you will soon hear more via email and the Lichgate magazine how the return to in-person services will work and how we continue to see our online services so let us now go into the world where we are sent like Abraham to bring blessing to the nations and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.